All right, so we got us an easy little project to uh, work on today in the shop. And in case you missed it, I recently put out a video on a uh, new Dake Arbor Press that I bought. And uh, in that video, I showed where the uh, original hand wheel that came with the, the press uh, could not be found whenever it was purchased. Uh, so it was missing whenever I got it. So I've got one here to replace the original hand wheel. And this is... Uh, this is a gift from my friend Aaron Durda, always sunny in the shop on uh, YouTube. And he and I worked out a little trade. He's got a component that he needs machined for his Lyle drill grinder. And I've, that's what I use, a Lyle drill grinder. So I'm going to machine him the component that's missing on, uh, on his grinder. And then he, uh, he picked up this hand wheel and the corresponding uh, rotating handle there. It goes into it and sent it to me uh, as soon as I showed that video he contacted me and offered up a trade so that's what we're doing so I got the hand wheel here this is a very nice looking casting and the the OD of the hand wheel this radius has been machined this has been faced off and center drilled there and of course we got our little our little boss there to where we can take this handle all right so we got a nice little chrome handle that will be threaded into this hand wheel here. I don't know what size. That looks like it's probably going to be a 3816. So we'll drill and tap it and screw that into there. So pretty simple. We'll uh, we'll check it up and uh, do our drilling bore into size. And then what we're going to do is we'll put a set screw through this, and the set screw is what will dog it off to the shaft on the on the press there. And then I'm going to on on the shaft on the press. There's nothing. For the set screw to bite to there's not a keyway or anything like that so my plan is to uh, uh, punch mark where the set screw is going to be and then i'll use a hand drill and just put a, a small dimple for the set screw to go into and i'll probably use this set screw right here which is a 3 8 16. set screw it'll go through like so we'll dimple the shaft and that's what will hold it to the shaft properly so i'll show you the uh, the press to kind of freshen you up on what's going on there and then we'll go to the lathe and start getting this machine work done. So this is the shaft right here where the hand wheel is going to go on and it measures one and seven sixteenths I believe. Yep to one and seven sixteenths so a little rusty from sitting outside I'm going to take some memory cloth and give this thing a really nice polish, get it down to nice clean metal, and then I'll use a micrometer to get a accurate measurement on it. And we'll bore it, say, one to two thousandths over where it will slip on there. And it looks like the uh, original hand wheel did have a set screw. When it, whenever it was on there, it was taken off and it was lost, but I can see a little divot right there where a set screw looks like it kind of uh, bit into it. So I'm gonna drill a dimple in there, but it's, there's not much pressure that it takes to uh, move this ram. So I'm using these pliers here and you can just rotate it up and down. And the purpose of this hand wheel is just to simply position the, the, uh, the ram right here up or down in any position that you want. Or once you get through pressing, then you use the hand wheel to um, bring the ram up out of the way of the workpiece. Yep, so that's it. By the way, I had a bunch of guys ask about these guys uh, what I was using. So these are Nipex uh, smooth jaw wrenches, I believe they're called, and they're adjustable. So you have a nice range there of uh, size that you can use. And I thought it worked out pretty good for, for uh, moving, moving this guy right there. And I've got a few of them. A viewer of me actually gave me the set of these. I apologize. I can't remember who it was, but a viewer sent me these and it was a set of three. So I've got three different sizes, this being the big boy. So I think what I want to do to start with is I actually want to hold it right here to do our boring but we're going to use the three jaw chuck right here and skin this area right here this boss down so that it's true with this so that when I flip it around and hold it that way that the OD is running nice and true it's not necessary but it's what I want to do so I already had this set up for another project that I was working on so it was just handy to, to have already the jaws flipped around and it looks like it lines up like dead in the center of the wheel here so I don't want to go crazy on you know machining with that holding it but I think this is going to work just fine for skinning this right there so let's see 
you, know, you can see just there how much is running out. It's not too bad, but it's definitely it's casted there, so it's not uh, not running true. All right, so let's get that turn. So there's the insert that I'm going to use for this little bit of turning, and so that is a kin of metal. I can't remember the grade, so here's the pack. It's a, that's a CNMG 432 MR. That's a chip breaker, and the grade is a KCK 15B. And these I have marked for cast iron. I've used these for cast iron, and they work really good for cast and ductile iron. Okay. Sure, I'm gonna be able to get up in here good. I think that's gonna work just fine. We'll get right up in there, right about where that radius starts on the uh, spokes, and I'll stop, stop cutting it right there, right about there. hard crust there. Go the other way. clean it up let me get my calipers I want to see where we're at yeah I think we might be able to get it down two and a quarter maybe just a little under there I don't think 15 will clean up we'll try it cleaned it up there you can still see a little bit of shiny that was right on the outer crust there but it's actually turned true so we're just gonna leave it right there and we'll go ahead and put us a nice little chamfer on there as well all right so we're gonna switch lathes and uh, head over to the monarch and then we'll use our six jaw Check up on that new machine boss there. All right, let's go ahead and get this chucked up. Let's see how she's running. Man, that looks great. No indicating needed right there. We'll find us a uh, drill bit, put us a pilot hole down through there, and then uh, we'll bore it to size. It's just way oil, by the way, and these 33F oilers work great for applying that right where you want it. Just 
opening up that center hole and allowing the, uh, the center drill to just kind of true it up. Put a brand new grind on this half inch drill. We'll use this to put a pilot hole down the center of it and then we'll open it up. Let's get us a drill bit. I'm thinking I might use one of these core drills if I have if I have the right size. There's a we could go like inch and a quarter, inch and five sixteenths. Uh, one and three eighths would actually put a little bit too close to comfort for me. Let me see. There's an inch and an eight. That's the one that we used on that last job. I don't remember what we did, but we reground that and used it. That looks like about an inch and a quarter right there. There's a one and five sixteenths right here. Clee Forge. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, that, that's a good grind on it right there. I think we'll use that. We'll check the shank, make sure there ain't no dings on the taper shank there, and we'll uh, we'll use this to make our hole. So what I want to do is take one of our precision ground bent stones here. These are completely ground flat, and then take the uh, let's make sure the shank is you know grease or anything on it, oil. Just take it and. And I can feel it. I can actually feel that stone hitting the high spots, the little dings. And you can see like right there, there's a high spot. There's a few little high spots where this thing's got dinged up. So I'll just keep rubbing this precision stone over it until the high spot blends in with the metal around it. Alright, I feel pretty good about that. Okay, let's go drill our hole. Core drill did a pretty good job drilling that hole with no fuss, no chatter. I'm just seeing what we ended up at. So a little bit over one and five, we did good there. So that was what, about 10, 11, 12, 13 thousandths oversize. All right, so now we'll get a boring bar set up and bore it to size. We're gonna be using a one inch boring bar. This is one of my good high quality bars. It's uh, very, uh, hard and uh, rigid and I'm going to use this uh, carbide tool right here. This is one that I found that fits in the hole good. So doing casts like this, these brazed on carbide tool bits work excellent for that. And you, you can resharpen them, you know, in case they chip or they get dull. We'll set a zero, we'll take 50 thousandths on this first pass here.
right, now that we got a clean bore in there, we'll check this. Well, let's go over there to the press and uh, clean the shaft off that this is going to fit. Looks like 431 is what I'm getting there. 431. Four thirty-one. Okay, so we'll just bore our wheel to uh, four one inch four thirty-two. Should be right around uh, one point four eighty. See where we're at, and we'll go from there. It's exactly three eighty. So we got fifty-two thousandths to come out of there to bring it to size. That was a 25 thousandths cut there, so should be, leave me with about 27 to come out for the uh, final final cut. I'll measure it two times just to make sure I'm getting the right measurement here. It's like 405. 405. Okay, so that does leave us with 27. It says 15, 25, 30, yeah, 27 thousandths. Check my size, I'm right where I want to be. One inch 432. So, benefit of using a bar like this where you can put in square tool bits is that you can easily go in there and hit the chamfers without having to swap out tools. So, I've got this piece of high speed that's been ground for a chamfer in the, the two corners. So, we'll put that in there and we'll do our chamfer. show you how I do the backside there. What I like doing is just stopping the machine and just running the tool bit through there and then visually lining it up like I'm doing there you can make sure you can see it. I can see the tool bit in there and I bring it into the corner where I want to cut it. Make sure everything's clear. Feed the cutter in to uh, cut the chamfer. Now make sure that I'm clear. And then run it back out. All right, so our lathe work is done. Corners look good, so I will take it out of there. And we'll go over there and we'll test fit it. And I'm going to come back over here to the lathe and give this a good wipe down and get rid of all the uh, cast iron dust off of it. So there's our there's our board hand wheel. Let's check our fit. Looks like we got a good fit right there. All right. One thou clearance. So let's go to the mill. We got to do our drill and tapping for our handle that goes there. And then we'll set up and we'll drill and tap for our set screw that's going to hold it to the shaft. So our handle that's going to screw in there, I checked that. That's 3 8 16. So we'll drill it with a 5 16 drill bit and then we'll tap it with this 3 3 8 16 gun tap right there. I'm going to use my pointer, which is actually a, it's a center, it's a ground center. I'm going to use that to uh, measure the center of this little boss area right here. It's a, ha uh, I'm sorry, looks like it's casted as a one inch diameter boss there, so I'm going to go half inch that's 
seven sixteenths right there. Let's see, put a little a little dot just to kind of mark that spot right there. I think that's going to work good. I set it in a little bit further there because of the uh, the radius machined on it. I think that'd be a good spot right where it's at. No need to center drill it or anything. These little uh, reduced shank or reduced length drills with the split point do a good job of self-centering. Good 316 tap. We're just gonna power tap it. Just running in my low low speed. be good for that let's uh, check it. it looks like it's gonna work good there we go perfect okay we got the angle plate set up here I'm just going to use a t-nut and a stud the t-nut sits in the uh, in the slot in the back I got a heavy washer right here that we'll use on the front and our flange nut we'll get this thing kind of centered where we want then we'll tighten it up so I think what I'll do is just line up the tap hole we did for the handle just kind of straight up and down I'm just going to visually look at it straight up and down And I think that'll work right there. Okay, so we're set up ready to drill and tap for our set screw. So this is one of those cases where what you have to use is called a pulley tap. Now you don't have to use a pulley tap. You can actually use a regular tap and they make tap extensions that you can use. But a pulley tap is designed to be able to get up in an application such as this where you're next to the feature of the, of the workpiece. So, Here's a pulley tap. This is a 3A16 pulley tap. So, of course, you got to be able to get in there and drill the hole, too. So, sometimes you got to have a long drill bit to get in there, which we have. So, we'll center up, <clears throat> drill our hole, and then we'll use this pulley tap to be able to reach in there and tap our hole. We'll just hand tap it. So, I want to find the center of this, and I won't be able to get my drill chuck down all the way against this to use an edge finder to. Uh, to find the edge. So what I'm going to do, I've got this piece of tool steel. This is a piece of 3 8 high speed steel that's ground. And I'm going to I'm going to use it. We're going to chuck it up. And we're going to run we're going to run up here close to the edge. I'm going to make sure that the back so I'm cleared on the back. The chuck is not going to hit the hand wheel there. But I want to be able to come up and I'm going to use this to find the find the edge. So I need a piece of paper and I'll be right back. So I'm going to use this and my digital readout. I'm going to use the half feature. So we're going to locate this side. Then we're going to come over here and locate this side. And I'm going to split the difference and go down to the middle. So what I want to do is. Let's see, just trying to get in there around the camera there some. I'm going to put that paper in there. And then once it grabs it and walks it out, we're on the edge. And 
I can tell it's touching it right there. You can see that little white mark. All right, so that's the edge right there. I'm going to zero out the uh, digital readout. And we'll come to the other side and we'll do the same thing. Making sure I don't hit the chuck there. I'm going to run this up until it touches the paper. All right, I can feel it. It's touching right there. So that's our that's our distance right there. So we're going to go half x, and then that will bring us to the center. So we'll just move it down until we get to zero, and then we'll be in the middle. I was trying to get right in the center of the boss, but none of my drill trucks will let me get down there with a center drill to spot it. So I've got it moved off uh, eighth of an inch off of center, which is still going to be fine. So we've got our Albright chuck there with our little center drill. And we're going to go ahead and we're just going to go ahead and drill it, center drill it anyway. All right, we got our center drilled, so we got a, a spot there for the drill to start. So we're going to take that out, and I've got a long 5 16 drill bit that we'll put up in the spindle and use this to drill our tap hole. Got our drill mounted in the collet. Okay. Now I've got to uh, move it off center to get the <laughs> get the drill back out of the collet there. All right, we got our spring center that we're going to use, putting that up into a half inch collet. And we got our tap and our wonderful tap wrench. Put the spring center in the end of the tap. And you see, now we've got plenty of room to be able to tap that hole using this guy right there. Just keep some pressure on the spring center there. Feel it, we've already gone all the way through. All right. Time to go put it on the machine, see if it works. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just use a, I'm gonna use a transfer punch to uh, make a little divot there, a punch mark of where I want it. I just wanna bring it off the casting just a touch. hit that punch mark there with a with a center punch to make it a little bit bigger and then we'll spot it with a drill bit bring it down there to where I can go straight in with it I think I don't know if this is gonna fit not really I can just take this off 
this is what was getting in the way. That's it. Looks like it's going to be lining up perfect right there. Alright, there's the set screw lining up with the divot. Alright, we got it. Get a little snug. There we go. Perfect. Alright, we got a functioning hand wheel on here now. Look at this. Rapid traverse of the ram, up or down. That's perfect. So you do your, put your work piece in here, bring it on down there close to where you want it, then you start doing your, well, I don't even have the table. I don't have the table locked in down there. Start doing our pressing, and then when you get pressing done, then you just bring it back up out of the way. That definitely locks it good right there. All right. Well, I'm real happy with the way this thing turned out. It looks good. It looks like it belongs on there. And all of our machining worked out good, too. A nice and easy job. So... I'm glad that this one is this one is done, and uh, the only thing left to do now is just paint it, which I'm going to do. And uh, you guys all know how to paint something, right? I'm just going to buy a can of spray paint, something that I can closely match this color here, the date color. Just take it outside and spray paint it, get some uh, so it keep it from rusting. So, anyway, there we go. Hope you guys enjoyed watching that project. So, on to the next.